Hello and welcome to the Your Life Choices Age Pension Guide. I'm Anne and like most people, I think that the process of applying for an age pension is daunting. This quick guide highlights the factors used to decide whether or not you qualify for a benefit from Centrelink, now known as the Department of Human Services. Your Life Choices has a useful guide which helps get you started with your retirement income stream by claiming an age pension, as well as simplifying some of the more complex scenarios you may encounter. Firstly, to be able to make a claim for the age pension, you need to have reached the eligibility age, which as you can see is currently 65 years of age. From 2017, this will gradually rise until it reaches 67 years of age by 2023. There are also residency rules surrounding eligibility for an age pension, which usually require you to have lived in Australia for 10 years before claiming. However, you should confirm your individual circumstances with Centrelink. When it comes to assessing your eligibility for an age pension, an income and an asset test are both applied. Under the income test, your pension is reduced by 50 cents in every dollar you exceed the threshold. Centrelink has clear definitions of what is included under the income test and this can include income from investments, rental property and of course salary. The value of the assets you hold can also impact the amount of age pension you receive, with your payment being reduced for every $1,000 you exceed the asset threshold. The good news is that your principal residence, should you own it, is excluded from the asset test and as a general rule, any money owing on an asset will also be taken into consideration when applying a value. Centrelink also has a clear definition of what is included under the asset test and this can include a car, investments and household goods. Once you are granted an age pension, the payment rate is calculated by applying the income and asset tests. Your pension entitlement is based on the lower of the two. The rate you'll be paid includes the basic pension rates as applied to a single applicant or a member of a couple, plus the pension supplement, which is designed to cover utility costs. An energy supplement is also paid to recipients of an age pension. The age pension payment and pension supplement are indexed twice a year, in March and September. However, the energy supplement is not. Of course, retirement doesn't always mean giving up work altogether. Many of us will choose to continue working past the traditional retirement age, either through the need to keep active or financial necessity. The good news is that for those who choose to keep working, the first $250 of income per fortnight is excluded from the income test. And if your employment is seasonal, you can bank this allowance to the maximum of $6,500 to use when you earn reportable income. Even if you receive just $1 in age pension, you will receive a pension concession card. And one of the greatest benefits of holding this card is the access to reduced cost medicines. State and territory and local governments also offer a range of concessions on rates, utilities, public transport and other costs. So what if you don't qualify for an age pension? This means you are considered a self-funded retiree and while the onus is on you to support yourself financially, you may be entitled to a Commonwealth Seniors Health Card. If your income is below the required limits, the CSHC, as it's commonly known, entitles you to many of the same concessions afforded to holders of a pension concession card. You can submit your age pension claim up to 13 weeks before you reach eligibility age by using the Human Services website or by picking up an application form from your nearest Centrelink service centre. Thanks for watching and don't forget to download your Life Choices Guide, your retirement and the age pension. See you next time.